whole barrel of apples. Today we are doing a grafting video. There are two kinds of grafting we do most, cleft grafting and bud grafting. There's also bench grafting, that's usually done in the winter time. There's a few tools you'll need in order to make this work. You'll need a good pruning saw. This is a Felco, it's a very good saw. You need a good pair of pruning scissors or clippers. Felco also makes another nice one. These are Coronas, but I like Felco's better. You need a hammer, a cleft making tool. You can either use this one or one like this one. It's designed so you can split the wood with this end and then open it with this end. Or you can just use a wood chisel. That works just as well. And then you need some pruning sealer. They have pruning waxes as well. I'd rather just use the sealer. It makes like a rubber coat over everything. We'll show you how that works. The last tool you'll need is a nice sharp knife. Some people use a box cutter. I just use a good pocket knife. And that's to prepare your scion. Your scion is the tree that you want. You can just graft in any kind of tree that you want onto an existing tree. A lot of trees that people do in their backyards have three or four different kinds of apples on it. You can do as many as you want on one tree. The kind that we're going to do today is we're going to put a honey crisp onto this existing gala tree. Now, what we're really concerned about is the rootstock. The rootstock determines the size of the tree. Throughout the years, they've developed anything from standard trees, which get from 35 to 40 feet high, 25 to 35 feet wide. Almost nobody uses them anymore. Now they've reduced rootstocks down to like a bud nine. The tree will get eight feet high and only a couple feet wide. This is meant for high density orchards. We use a semi-dwarf rootstock, which is a roots um, M7. M7 works well because it holds itself up. You don't need any support system. It grows well in drought and grows well in wet. It doesn't mind if its roots are really wet in the spring. So we like it. You have to train it a little bit more than some other root stocks, but it works nice for us. And M26 also makes, it's a smaller root stock. It's more in the dwarf size than the semi-dwarf size. And that makes it so, it makes more buds because the tree is stunted right from the beginning. We'd rather have the tree grow a little stronger than try to stunt it later. So we'll show you how to do the, the bench grafting here. We'll have a bud grafting video later on in the summer. Bud grafting works better in July. It's when the bark is soft, it pops open good. You can slide the, the bud right underneath that. We'll show you that later. But this video is gonna primarily be on bench graft, uh, cleft grafting, sorry. Okay, so here we are, we're gonna prepare the wood now. I've already cut the tree off. You can use a chainsaw to do that or your handsaw. Leave yourself at least a foot so you can cut back as you need to. We just take a little piece off of this to get the new green wood. You don't want to try to do this stage with the whole limb on there because what happens is the limb falls down and it splits. If you try to do it with one cut, you have to do a bottom cut under here first, then cut the top, and then when it snaps off, you won't lose that piece of wood. Now take your cleft making tool and just drive that in, right in the middle of the stick, pretty much. See that's starting to open up there? That's what you're looking for. Now when you prepare your cyan wood, have at least five buds on it. And these you should have harvested in February. You harvest them off the tree you want from last year's wood. Try not to get two years growth, just get last year's growth. 
harvest them like this, probably put 10 to 15 in a bundle, wrap the bundle in wet paper towel, stick it in a bag, put it in your refrigerator. What you want to do is have the tree you're grafting onto be further along in development, in leaf development, than your cyan would. So take this, about five buds, cut that off with your clipper. You have to take your knife then and make a wedge piece. On the bottom end, so the sap comes up the stick this way. On the bottom end, you just make a nice wedge, both sides. Try to make the middle of it end up in the middle of the stick. Like that. What you have is a nice cambium layer right here. This is that green strip that runs around the edge. The, the center is just dead wood. Don't worry about that. There's another line on here that you will see. You have this green line around here, right on the outside by the bark. You want this cambium layer and that cambium layer to line up. If they don't line up, your graft will fail. Now you take this out, turn it around, and drive in the other end. That gives you a little more room to work. It also splits the wood better. Now take your wedge and you put it in there, making sure to line up those two cambium layers. If your wedge hair is cut, you might be able to see that. If your wedge hair is cut at a little bit of an angle, put the small side of the angle to the inside. That'll put more pressure on the outside of the stick. Put it just like that. Now I have a, a knot over here that I'm not gonna bother with that side of the tree. Usually you put two, one on each side. Once you take this tool out, the tree wants to clamp itself shut. That'll put pressure on the stick, holding it in there. Okay, what you want to do now is just paint the end of your graft up. Make sure you get everything covered. You do not want this to dry out. In the spring wind, it will dry out very quickly. That's why you paint this stuff on. Make sure you fill up all the cracks. Any crack you see down the sides, paint them up really, really good. There's only really two things you have to worry about grafting. One is the cyan and the rootstock cambium layers match up and that the graft does not dry out. If that dries out, you're done. Now this is gonna take, oh, you probably won't see a lot of growth until mid-June maybe. Don't panic. As long as your cyan wood stays looking healthy, it doesn't get all like stringy and dried out looking, you're still good. Make sure you paint that up really, really good. Put a little bit on the very end of your grafted in stick to make sure that doesn't dry out. And there you have it. That is a grafted tree. Now hopefully, like I say, what you'll start to see is you'll see these buds develop. They'll start to come out with just a little shoot of green on each one. If you're successful by June, you'll definitely know whether they're gonna live or not. The biggest problem we have doing this are the birds sit on them and sometimes snap them off, or they haven't healed in well enough by pick your own time, and the little kids come by and grab them and snap them off. But I really don't prefer this way of grafting. I'd much rather do a bud graft. 
This kind of grafting works if you have an established orchard, you're doing a large amount of trees that you want to turn over to something else. Like if this was a Baldwin tree or something that you know nobody wants anymore, you'd graft it over to a more desirable apple. Or if you want a different bunch in your backyard and want all different kinds on one apple tree. And you don't want to go through the time of waiting to grow a new tree. However, a new tree will probably grow faster and develop into a, a decent sized picking tree before these will. Okay, so I'll show you one more and then I'll show you some that we did three or four years ago and how they look afterwards. just making sure we paint that up really good. The thing I like about grafting is when you read in the Bible when Christ says we are the ingrafted branch, this kind of adds to that a little bit. The Bible has a lot of agricultural undertones to it because it was written to a people that were agricultural people. Their economy was based on agriculture and they understood a lot of what he was saying because they were very familiar with it. But when he says that one group of people is engrafted in to the vine and he is the vine, then that's what this is about right here. This is a picture of what happens spiritually when you believe in Christ, you get grafted into his, his kingdom. It means he physically takes you and puts you in. It's kind of a neat picture when you understand what the physical end of grafting is and then apply that to your spiritual life since the whole barrel of apples is about our faith and our work and our play and all that we do, I'd just like to share that with you. So there you have it. There's another one. We will now, I will now show you what it looks like after a couple years of having a grafted, cleft graft on a tree. Like I said, we did these trees probably I don't know, three or four years ago. We did them as a homeschool project for my son so he could learn about grafting. And it's turned into this. Some projects you have to watch out what you do. They just become all consuming. But this here is the part that we painted. That's the old tree. These here are all the new trees. see there where once the wood split and it makes that 
scab over it. it grows right in nice. I thank you for watching the whole barrel of apples. This is our cleft grafting video. I would appreciate it if you'd like it and hit the subscribe button. Also tell your friends about what we do here. Now we'll be open mid-July for pick your own blueberries and pick your own sunflowers. Thank you. Get the bloody stuff over. Gets all over you.